Hi, I'm Cole Hans, the Communications Director for the Huck Institutes of the Life Sciences at Penn State. Hi, I'm Beth McGraw, and I'm the Director of the Center for Infectious Disease Dynamics, or CID, at Penn State University. There are so many different streams of information out there on COVID-19 right now. Beth, let's tell our listeners and viewers why they would want to come to you with their questions about COVID-19. In CID, we have over 50 faculty who study infectious diseases, and uh, many of whom are currently working on coronavirus, studying and modeling its transmission, um, providing advice to governments and the healthcare industry, and then in the laboratory, trying to develop diagnostics, vaccines, and uh, novel therapeutics. So Beth, can you tell our viewers uh, what they would do if they want to submit a question to you and your fellow scientists and uh, how that's all going to work moving forward? So each week, we'll be here to answer your questions that are based on the latest scientific evidence. So please send them to asksid at psu.edu. We'll pick the most commonly posed questions and we'll answer them here anonymously. And then you can be sure that, that what you're hearing is both accurate, but also really up to date. Additionally, if you want to follow these videos and see the answers week in, week out, please go to this website coming up on the screen. It is asksid.psu.edu. And uh, for today, we're going to start with some questions that Beth has been collecting from colleagues and friends and family. We're going to give the top five questions of the week. I'm going to ask those questions, and Beth is going to provide her answer. So let's begin. Uh, the first question is, how long before we see a vaccine? Unfortunately, we're still 12 to 18 months away from a vaccine. So you might have been hearing in the news media that there have been a number of research teams around the world that have developed novel candidates. What has to happen next is that those candidates are then put through a series of trials um, based on increasing numbers of volunteers, some healthy and some with coronavirus. The goal of those trials is twofold. So first, to make sure that there are no adverse reactions to having the vaccine itself. And then secondly, to make sure that the vaccine works, that it's effective. And we'll be looking for two different types of effectiveness. It could be that vaccines actually prevent people from getting coronavirus, or it could be that they reduce the severity of disease. And both of those would be most welcome. Thank you. Uh, question number two, how long can the virus live on surfaces? A recent study that just came out this week has uh, explored this issue, and it shows that virus can live on hard surfaces, smooth surfaces like glass and metal, for up to three days, whereas uh, the virus seems to only live up to 24 hours on cardboard, which is more porous. And this is why we're telling people to make sure that you're wiping down surfaces with alcohol-based cleaners, using soap and water on your hands or an alcohol-based cleaner, and avoid touching your face. So the virus can come in through the entry points of your eyes, nose, and your mouth. This is also why social distancing works, because it's keeping people out of the public areas, out of contact with these surfaces that could potentially um, have virus on them. The question about fabric is less clear, so um, we have less information about how long it might last, but it's probably more similar to cardboard because fabric is porous. What we recommend is that when people have been outside the home working, that when they come home, they change their clothes before they interact with their families. Um, they can wash their clothes in hot or warm water to kill the virus. Um, and this is really standard practice for people in the healthcare industry. And it's probably a good practice for people in the general community to begin adopting under these circumstances. Thank you, Beth. Question number three is, can I get coronavirus from a package? We have no evidence that anyone has contracted coronavirus from a package, but given what we know, that the virus can live for up to a day on these packages, you can just treat them with a bit of uh, respect. So wear gloves if you interact with packages or wash your hands after touching them, and you could even just let your package sit for a day or two before opening it. Thank you. Question number four, can I get the virus from someone breathing on me? The answer to that is yes. So we know that when people are coughing and sneezing, but also when they're just laughing or talking or breathing, they can be expelling virus particles in these small aerosolized droplets that can hang in the air. And this is why under social distancing, we encourage people to stay up to two arms lengths or six feet away from each other. Most of the transmission is likely to occur under shorter distances, around three feet. Um, but some recent work has come out showing that those aerosolized droplets can hang in the air for anywhere from 30 minutes to a few hours. 
Thank you. And the fifth and final question for this episode is, uh, after you uh, contract coronavirus the first time, can you get it a second time? We don't know very much yet about immunity to coronavirus. Um, we do know there's been a study that's just come out in monkeys that demonstrates that they do have antibodies that they make against this virus that are protective and keep them from getting it a second time. The way that we'll find out how this works in humans is by taking blood samples from people who are currently sick with coronavirus and watching the level of antibody production and understanding how long that lasts through time. So that information is yet to, to come, but will be uh, monitored by a number of research groups in the coming weeks. Thank you very much, Beth. Um, I want to let everybody know who's viewing that we intend to try to put out two of these videos every week. We'll be collecting these questions again on the screen. Send your questions to asksid at psu.edu, and please follow along with the answers in these videos at a website, asksid.psu.edu. Uh, we are going to try to put out two a week. We're just uh, putting it all together right now. Uh, additionally, uh, there's talk and, and a desire to help families and children, so we're, we're exploring ways that we might be able to take questions specific to families and children and provide that service to help everyone stay informed. So please do uh, share this with friends and family that you feel would, would benefit. Uh, we want everybody to stay safe out there. Please uh, follow along. Uh, we'll see you next time. Beth, do you have anything else you want to share with our viewers? I would just say check back regularly to stay informed, um, stay healthy, and keep up your social distancing.